What's going on guys, Mark from World of Emulation here. Today, I will give you a full guide on how to set up CMU. I will go over how to set it up, the best settings, where to find Wii U games, how to apply updates and DLCs, and other optimizations. If you came to this video expecting to go over online connectivity, I would find a different video solely on this topic. It's pretty risky since you can get your actual Nintendo ID banned since it's using official Nintendo servers. I have timestamps below if you want to go straight to the sections. I will also have all the links that you need in the description. With all of that said, please follow carefully. This is the website to download the Wii U emulator. Be sure you at least reach the system requirements. This goes without saying, you need a pretty decent PC to run this game around or above 30 FPS. Then, go to the download link and select the stable version. You can download the experimental versions if you want. Next, go to the website called Steam Hook and download the latest version. Next, assuming that this is your first time experiencing an emulator, I highly recommend downloading DS4 Windows. This is if you have a PS4, PS5, Pro Controller, or Joy-Cons. I will download it for testing purposes. This will allow us to use motion controls. So go to the Download tab and click Download. Lastly, for Wii U games, go to this website right here. The tutorial will actually start here by downloading a game, update, and DLC. This will be the building blocks of us leading up to the emulator itself. If you want, you can skip this entire section and get on with the CMU setup. Now, download the latest version of USB Helper Installer EXE. After all of that is downloaded, you can close down the tabs except for this video. Otherwise, how would you go on without me? Now let's head over to our Windows Explorer and go to the download section. Again, we will start by finding Wii U games. So, click on USB Helper Installer. Windows should pop up and click Next and Agree. Be sure to not touch this and leave it as default. Click Next. For this, you can set this at default. If you want to select a different destination, be sure not to put it in a Programs File folder as it needs to bypass admin rights and it will fail to download. So I will install on a different drive altogether. Be sure to create a new folder for it and then click on install. Then click finish. Then the app will boot up and prompt up a window. Agree to the terms and select your region. Click OK on the disclaimer. Then you will want to select a destination that games will be downloaded to. But just create a temp folder because this will not really matter for the end result. You'll see very soon. Then it will ask you for Wii U keys. This is much easier than the use it keys. All you need to do is insert a website, uh, copy from the description and paste the link onto here. If the website does not work, just type Wii U keys on Google and find a website that works. Hopefully it should work. It'll prepare a ticket catch. Uh, this will take a minute. Now we got the application working. First things first, to only look at Wii U games, go to this filter tab and unselecting everything but Wii U native titles. Now back to the library tab. We all know most of you are wanting to get Breath of the Wild, so let's download it with the update and DLC. So search the game. Right click on the game itself and click on download game. It will prompt you saying will you want to update. If you want your game to work at all, this is critical that you have to press yes. And then same with DLC. You should see three tabs of the things you want to download. Then you can click start downloading. Now the most important part is to check mark unpack. Then you'll need to create a new folder that games will be downloaded onto that you actually want. After that, 
let the files download. Alright, after the game is finished downloading, you can close out this whole application. Let's finally extract Simu. After Simu is extracted, put the Simu hook inside of the folder and extract it there. Be sure to put a dedicated folder for games, which I am doing right here. And also be sure to grab the files from the USB helper game folder onto here. Just the game though. We will update and apply DLC to the game in a second. I will also create a shortcut for Simu. And then now, we can finally open up Simu. You will be prompted a window. I would recommend having a dedicated folder just for save files, but if not, it will just create a folder inside of Simu but I'll go ahead and place it in a dedicated folder. Be sure to name it MLC01 as I have right here, and make sure that is your directory. Your game's directory is simple. Select the folder that has all the games in it like I told you. Just select the folder itself, and then click Select Folder. Be sure to download Community Graphic Packs. This will contain lots of mods, enhancements, and bug fixes from the community. I'll go over some detail onto this, Click No and select Next. Checkmark on Automatically Check for Updates. We will configure our controller a bit later as we did not set up DS4 Windows. Then select Close. Now I'm going to go left to right on these tabs starting with Updating and Applying DLCs. Go to the top left and select Install Game Title Update or DLC. Find the two folders that you downloaded of Breath of the Wild. We'll update first, so go into the folder, then the meta folder, and select meta.xml. This will then slowly, but surely, update the game. This applies the exact same steps with DLC. Now we got the update and DLC installed, so go to the top left of options and go to graphic packs and you'll see all of your games listed here that you can adjust. So, let's adjust our game. Click the plus sign, and we'll just go from top to bottom starting with cheats. These are the basic cheats. Clicking on the cheat itself, over to the right, will give you information and even allowing you to customize what you want to do with it. For example, changing the durability of all of the weapons, which to some was a deal breaker for Breath of the Wild. Now, Let's head over to mods. The one you are probably the most interested in is uh, increasing our FPS. So let's check mark this and over to the right, set the mode to advanced settings. We can see a bunch of options that we can work with, starting with the frame rate limit. Setting to 60 FPS is considered to be the most stablest, but you can go above that if you so desire. I personally play this game at 144 FPS limits and it plays great enough. Everything else below can be left at default. Now, above this is extended memory and draw distance. If you have a strong PC, I would check mark both of these. When we get to the draw distance, here you can adjust how far you can see. Having two times will require you to have an extended memory mod which we just enabled. But again, use this if you have a strong PC. But you can always try it for yourself if you are curious. You can also have better quality trees in the distance and have more density in the grass. Texture distance detail can come down to preference. I've heard some people think it kind of looks bad since the textures become too jaggy when you are moving, but it's up to you. Going down a bit in the mod section, I also like to remove HUD elements to be more immersed. So I'm just going to disable some of these options. On the workaround section, you essentially just enable all the things you are going to use for your API. I will be checkmarking Vulkan, and I will explain a little later as to why we are using Vulkan. Also, be sure to click on the plus here. 
and select the options that are tied with your graphics card. Then, check mark Enhancements. Over to the right, we have Clarity, which changes the look of the whole game. I highly recommend this setting to have a nice look to them. My recommendations are Sir Frost preset, Dim Display, or Ruses' preset. I find these to uh, look very appealing, but you can always experiment. Depth of Field is optional, I like it off. Reflections are optional, but I like to keep these two settings at default. It really doesn't make a huge difference, but it will impact your performance. Anostropic filtering, I like to put it at 16x, but there isn't really wrong just to keep it at the default setting. Finally, for graphics, know that all of this will impact your performance. Aspect ratio is default. Resolution, I'm putting at 1440p. Again, you need a good GPU for this. Anti-aliasing is default. Shadows medium to high, nothing above that and shadow draw distance to either high to very high. Just know that if you really want the best performance, you can set all of these to default, including draw distances, since draw distances will impact your performance. Now onto some general settings. The general tab is just all preference, so let's just go to the next tab. If you want to have the best possible experience when it comes to performance and visuals, use Vulkan, and be sure to use Async Shader Compile. There are certain games where they have graphical glitches on Vulkan, so you're going to have to set those to OpenGL. Be sure to use Bilinear for upscale and downscale filters, and full screen scaling is set to keep aspect ratio. Okay, so let's go to the next tab. Switch the API to X-Audio 2. You can also adjust the volume here for the game. The device is what you want the sound of the game to go through of. For overlay, you can adjust this to your liking. Set the position to wherever you want, and scaling is a bit small, so you can increase this. The account tab really is for creating new Wii U users and loading it up, as well as online, which I said previously I won't go over. You can now close this tab. Onto input settings. Let's first go and extract DS4 Windows. Some people will get a pop-up that says you need to download some file in order for it to work. When clicking on ds4windows.exe, window will pop up asking where do you want your settings to be saved. I would choose the right option just because it is easy. Then you are right to the app. Connect your controller, click over to the edit button, then go to the others tab and for emulated controller, click on Xbox 360 and then save it. Then just head over to the settings tab and click on enable server under UDP and use smoothing. You can now minimize it and over to the options tab where it says gamepad motion source, go to the first DSU1 and select by slot. This should enable motion controls for any game. For input settings itself, the emulated controller is either Wii U gamepad or pro controller. For the controller itself, Click the API and select X input and use that controller. Click add and it should be all mapped for you. Clicking on settings will give you options to use rumble and adjusting dead zone in case your sticks are drifting. You can also calibrate them. Now let's just go over some miscellaneous settings. On the CPU tab, affinity should be all logical cores. We will touch on NFC in just a sec. On the debug tab, selecting accurate barriers will fix some occasional shadow flickering, but disabling this will actually increase your performance by 10 plus FPS. Be sure that both of the timers are set to default, and then use Seamuth Hook. Now right click on Breath of the Wild and click Edit Game Profile. Be sure to select the CPU mode to multi-core read compiler and thread Quantum 45,000 cycles. And then on the graphics tab, be sure this is on true. You can now close the window. Now this little section will just cover amiibos, will be very short. This section will allow you to use virtual amiibo for compatible Wii U games. All you do is to click scan NFC tag from file and you can go ahead and click on the amiibo file. 
I will have these in the description down below if you are so interested. Now, let's just make the finishing touches and optimizations for our computer. First, right click on cmu.exe and click on properties. Go to compatibility and check mark disable full screen optimizations and run this program as an admin. Then go to change high DPI settings, check both of these boxes and scale by application. Click OK, apply these settings and close the window. Then on the bottom left corner, search power and sleep settings. Then go to the additional power settings and select high performance. Now this next step is for NVIDIA GPU users. There is a similar application for AMD using Radeon software. So right click and click NVIDIA control panel. Click manage 3D settings. Then go to the program settings. Click on add. Go on browse. Then find that cmu.exe file and click open. Scroll down to OpenGL rendering GPU. This should be set to your main GPU. Power management mode should be set to prefer maximum performance. Then scroll until you see threaded optimization and set to on. Triple buffering should be set to on and VSync is optional. Then click apply. When that is applied, close down the window. This last step is for low end users that have low amount of RAM. So go to control panel, click system and security, then click system. A window should pop up. Click on advanced system settings. Another window should pop up. Under the performance section, click settings, then go to the advanced tab, click change, and uncheck this. For whatever your CMU directory is, you want to select that drive using this custom size, put 10,000 megabytes, and click set, press OK, and be sure to restart your computer to save your changes whenever you have the time to do so. Then make sure you to apply and press OK. After all of that, you are done setting up CMU. I'm going to boot up Breath of the Wild to show you some gameplay. I covered all the important things you need to play and enhance your Simu experience. There are obscure advanced tutorials like additional mods and online, but I simply don't have all the knowledge about them, but there are great videos about them. Note that yes, you'll still experience some stuttering, but that is expected at your first playthrough. But if you guys enjoyed this video or found this useful, please please leave a like, helps my channel a lot and subscribe for more tutorials and emulation coverage. See you guys in the next video.